The scripture lesson this morning in the Old Testament is found in Exodus, and it's chapter 20, verses 8 through 12. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath day unto the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither shall you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your animals or the aliens within your gates. For six days and six days the Lord has made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is around them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your mother and father so that you may live long in the land of the Lord your God that he is giving to you. And then we turn to the New Testament and we go to Romans chapter 12. And this one is verses 1 through 8. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual acts of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasant, and perfect will. For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment and in accordance with the measure of faith God has given to you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we are many who form one body. Each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts and according to the grace given to us. If a man's gift is prophesying, then let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern with diligently. And if it is mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Here ends the gospel for the day. May God bless us to the hearing and the understanding of these words. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I've called today's message, Make Holy Moments. And I'd like to just read uh, a short piece here uh, by one of my favorite authors. I borrow from him very frequently, and I'm sure you read a lot about him too. His name is Anonymous. So this is what Anonymous said, and I think it will sort of hit the nail on the head. Always remember you are loved. As you grow older, stay strong. Be kind and have courage and believe in yourself. Believe and trust in God and remember he will be with you always. Have you ever thought about a holy moment? This is something we all experience in one way or another. For example, an unexpected call or a letter from a long lost friend or a relative. A moment, another moment is holding the door open for someone who can't do it for themselves. It could be a smile from a stranger as you go about your daily and even mundane chores. A saying that is not very old is if you see someone without a smile, Give them one of yours. Think back to the times in spring with all the colors and the flowers and the miracle of their, their general growth. And also, while we're thinking of colors and growth, 
we sort of flip right into fall. And are you not in awe of the colors and the leaves that we should be? We should all be. Autumn is when God spills a rainbow. How holy is that? All those colors come from Him. Allow me to tell you of a moment I had yesterday at our church wide garage sale. God bless whoever invented them because it was a never ending day. Fortunately, our church decided we have it in town and it's this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, but church does not do it on Sunday. I don't think I could take another day of this stuff. Um, some of it was fun, some of it was, um, you know, the usual work. You got to load this stuff in, you got to set it up, you got to take it down. It was a, a day that just seemed to go on endlessly. But uh, one of the things that happened was, there was a little girl there with her father, and we had a whole bunch of little bears, teddy bears, and she wanted one, and he wasn't about to do what she wanted. He wasn't about to do anything, and I was willing to, you know, if you want to bargain, I'm getting better at bargaining than I would like to admit to a lot of people, but at any rate, she got ready to walk away, and I said, listen, I've got something for you. This teddy bear, and I picked up the one that she had an eye on, and I said, he needs a good home, and he needs somebody to take good care of him, and I think you could do that, and this would be our gift from the church to you, and of course, she beamed, and the father's looking at me, I thought the man was going to explode, but uh, he got over that, and off she went. And that was the end of that, thought I. But what do I know about little kids and teddy bears and people and things and intervention from heaven? So a little while later, she returned and she stood there. She only, you know, I, I don't think the kid was five or six years old. And she raises up her hand and she has a fist and she says, and I have something for you. Oh. And she bought me a teddy bear. Oh. And he is a space bear because he's in his space suit and helmet. <laughs> and I have never ever imagined a teddy bear in a space suit, never mind having one. And I got the biggest hug and kiss from this little kid. And I thought, this is a holy moment. This is God's love in action. Not that I was the one that was involved with it, but she was the one that was involved with it. That you can do things, little acts of kindness certainly go a long, long way. Our lives sometimes seem to run away from us. But I would ask each of you in your own time and each in your own way to remember and reflect upon the moments that created a more positive influence in and on your life. This is an activity that you can do alone or you can do it with others. Some people like to meet and have a discussion with each other and that's perfectly fine. Nobody's being graded, marked or whatever. That's between you and, your, and certainly God for those that are alone and you and the other people and God because we're not gonna leave him out no matter how many people you decide to share some of your events with. And then these are holy moments and they're to be considered as a gift from God. Just think of the sacraments of Holy Communion, the body and blood of Christ. Symbolically share that. Is that not a holy moment for us? We observe that frequently in the church. Baptism is another holy moment in life. And being realistic, most of us don't recall that uh, our baptismal service uh, service because we were baptized as infants, but most, not all of us, but most of us would be gathered together here today in this house, would not be gathered today in this house of God if it were not that we had the chance to be baptized and we came home to God. Um, after I leave here today, I have the privilege of going to a birthday party. This one it's only one years old today. A couple of weeks ago, I had the honor of doing a funeral service for another friend. 
and she was over 100. So we'll run the spectrum, and this is what life is. It's full of spectrums, it's full of opportunities, and sometimes we have to, uh, you know, really step back a little bit and see what it's all about, and then say, okay, God, let's go. Which direction am I running in at this point? And if there's anyone here in this church right now uh, who's interested in baptism, uh, let's talk about it later. This could be a holy moment. Each holy moment that we experience is this gift of God. And because of this, we must never forget to give thanks to God for all of the blessings we have received. A lot of people are not baptized as children. Uh, and when they get into adulthood, be it the younger end of the spectrum or the older part, well, they're too busy, their friends might not like it. That's not between you and your friends, it's between you and God. And if there is anybody who can take care of that, help them and maybe give them a holy moment. Holy moments are not just routine times, but rather they're God inspired. God gives us these moments so that we may become more aware of them through prayers, scripture, different readings, as well as in our own lives and our personal conduct. Don't forget the personal conduct part. It seems to be a forgotten phrase in today's uh, vocabularies out there. Each person who professes their, their belief in Jesus Christ will have eternal life. This is one, if not the most important moment in your life. This holy moment of professing your faith gives and grants you eternal life. Eternal life is defined as life without beginning and without an end. It is forever and ever. It is timeless. It is God eternal. Deuteronomy tells us that God is our refuge, and Romans confirms that the gift of God is eternal life. Now, how great is that for a holy moment? How great is that? You'll never get it any other place than through God. And to God be the glory forever and ever. Amen.